All right, so when I'm kicking the bag, sometimes it helps to have a target. Got a little flower beret here. Here we got the solar plexus, or the vomit button, I like to call it. And then, of course, you got your throat. And there would be where, where you get your, your liver shots or your organs, the kidneys. Get it in there real nice and deep like. There we go. That's my Mona Lisa. Does that remind you of anyone we know? In an earlier video, I was responding to comments, and uh, Christ is King had mentioned that I had some contradictions. And I wanted to talk about that. Uh, basically, the crux of it was, on one hand, I say that I'm not bothered by comments, and I don't really care what other people think. But on the other hand, I make response videos because comments bother me, and I care what other people think. And I thought <laughs> it's interesting because it is a contradiction. And... I've been putting a lot of thought into this, and I thought, you know what, you guys deserve the real, you know, there is an underlying thing, and I kind of wanted to talk about that, because it's interesting, or, well, maybe it isn't interesting, but it does explain a lot, I guess we could go into that. I've read about a lot of Carl Jung, uh, shadow integration, basically taking the sides of you, the things that you don't like, your bad aspects, your negative personality traits, and integrating them so that you can, you know, become a fully realized self. And that's something that I've worked on for most of my adult life. When I was young, uh, I was a runaway. From about the age of 16 to I joined the Marine Corps, which was uh, after I turned 19 years old. I turned 20 while I was in boot camp. So the, <laughs> I was the second oldest guy in my platoon. <laughs> I already... At that age, I'm the old guy already. You know, that's funny. You're not even 20 years old and you're the old guy. Now, professionally, at what I do for a living, I am the guy that they call in to resolve conflicts. Conflict resolution is my specialty. Whenever two parties are going at it, and it could be up to physical fighting, anger, that sort of thing, when it gets really, really heated, I'm the negotiator. I'm the person they bring in to calm both sides down. And as a result... Over the years, I take a lot of verbal abuse, and I've gotten quite used to it. I handle myself quite well. My big thing is never lose your composure, especially in a professional setting. Now, have I always been perfect? Of course not. Nobody's perfect. But generally speaking, I'm always calm, collected, professional, and I do come with a little bit of sarcasm. I suppose over the years, the, my quick wit is how I've learned to deal with things. You know what I mean? I make a lot of sarcastic remarks. Like uh, one time there was two guys that were trying to fight and it was at Resort World and we were up on like the 63rd floor and they're ready to go at it. They called me up there and they were like, watch your back, these guys, these guys are pretty tough. And when I walked in, the first thing I said is, hey, <laughs> I hear we got some felony assault going on. <laughs> Who's going to jail tonight? <laughs> and they both snapped out of it and looked at me like, what are you talking about? And I was like, oh, you know, you were, uh, we're above the 60th floor, so it's automatically a felony if you put your hands on them. I said, but uh, um, maybe we can work something out. You know, that's kind of how I approach things. It's like I, I get their attention. I make them realize how ridiculous they're being, and then I try to work on a, a resolution that everybody's happy with. Generally speaking, that's how I handle that kind of thing. So online, of course, you know, in the comments section in my videos, I'm always the happy one, the, the one that's like, <laughs> everything's a joke, it's no big deal. But under the steel surface, oh man, it gets dark. I guess I, I own explanation. From about the age of 17 to 19, when I was living on the streets, I had some really, really bad things happen to us. Now, my story's not unique. We have all been through a lot of things. But, unfortunately, mine, uh, I was very, I guess you could say I was small in stature, and I looked extremely young. So even when I graduated boot camp, most people thought, I had comments like this, asking if I was in like the junior ROTC or something, like, uh, was I really a Marine? You know, I would get comments, full uniform with deployment medals on, and people would ask if I was in some sort of high school organization. So imagine me as a young, you know, when I turned 18, spending, you know, a couple months in a county jail and 
uh, Tallahassee, Florida, and then I got moved up to Tampa, <laughs> and I looked like I was, you know, 15, and, oh, man, well, needless to say, those few years on the streets, I had some really, really ugly things happen to me. Um, I don't really want to go into detail, but let's just say that I suffered from pretty extreme PTSD, and I think that's why I self-medicated myself. After I, you know, after I got sober and I started working with doctors, you know, we started confronting a lot of this stuff, and I've done a lot of work over the years to, you know, integrate a lot of this stuff, to integrating the, the ugly with the good and just becoming a realized person. That's what it's all about. You take the things you don't like about yourself, and instead of trying to separate them, you integrate them. So for me, it was, ex it was hyper-violence. It was uh, physical, uh, extreme physical abuse to the point where I was hospitalized. Uh, I had some just really, really ugly things happen to me, and I put myself in situations... Uh, I was very naive um, when I ran away from home and I got into a circle of people. I, I was ripe for abuse. Like they were looking to take advantage of me, and they did. And the biggest thing for me is I was unable to fight back. I had no way of defending myself. So for the longest time, I suffered with the anger of letting it happen. You know, I let these things happen to me, and I swore... I swore that I would never, ever be put in that situation again. And I took things too far. I became extremely violent. Um, anger, you know, just like I, I took it way too far. I became the bully that I hated. If I'm being 100% honest, sometimes when I read the comments online, something will strike me and I will think of really murderous thoughts. I will think super hyper-violent like slow, painful torture, that kind of thing. And, you know, I go, I, I have to deal with those thoughts because that's not who I am anymore. What I am, I believe, is I was a monster and I was capable of great violence. We're talking sick, sadistic, like really ugly things. Like I, was, I took my revenge out on people that had nothing to do with what happened to me. And, uh, you know, I integrated that, and I realized that by choosing to be kind and patient and tolerant and loving, but being able to be capable of extreme hyperviolence, like, you know, almost sociopathic stuff, like that, there was a virtue in that, you know, like knowing what I wanted to do and what I was capable of doing. Uh, and yet still choosing to be the bigger man and, you know, like on, making an honest, good faith effort at peaceful resolution, like really walking away, turning the other cheek stuff. It, 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 I tell you, in the moment it hurts, in the moment when somebody wrongs you and you take offense or I take offense and I choose to just forgive and walk away, it, 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 it hurts me. It's painful. But I always feel like good afterwards, you know? I feel like I did the right thing. I feel like I was a good example. I live by some strict principles, and one of them is um, I am against uh, acts of violence or uh, coercion. Anything that uses force, coercion, or violence against another person to get them to, you know, do what you want them to do is, is evil, and it goes against my principles. But that's not to say that I don't wish that I could you know I have those thoughts and then when I have those dark thoughts when I go to that dark place I have to seek help I have to I have a doctor that I work with and I talk about these things and you know I would say I'm pretty well adjusted now uh, because I've dealt with a lot of that stuff you know we worked through all that trauma that I had as a kid and it's no longer an issue but there's still some of it's like still like regi residual if you will like someone will say something I'll take it wrong, and I'll get mad, but then I'm kind of able to process it and let it go. And a lot of times when I make like these response videos, that is part of that process. Making light of a situation, making it funny, making it, you know, what it really is, which is nothing. Most of the things we get upset about, we get angry about, it, it really is nothing if you look at it. 
but it's dealing with that first knee jack rea reaction where I'm thinking in my mind like I would just want to take a blade and slowly gut someone and watch them bleed out in front of me you know just dealing with some super dark thoughts some really twisted stuff and then I gotta like go hey whoa, where'd you go there buddy like <laughs> come back here you know let's let's bring it back let's turn tone it down a notch uh, you know that like I have to deal with that like that's there that is real that is part of my past and that's something you know back in the day I would have done some really really sick and twisted stuff especially if somebody talked to me the way some of these people talk to me online I just I mean I could I could spend hours going into some of the situations that I've been in I make jokes about being mentally defective and there that's real like I have some serious mental issues and that's why I think that's how come I got into drugs and drinking so much because it just kind of numbed that out you know and I've had a long time to deal with this stuff I really have and now now it's I'm to the point where I can talk about it now I haven't really discussed it much on YouTube uh, there's things like I would like to be able to tell you what specifically happened to me and the way I was taken advantage of and hurt um, and the way they you know after the act was done they beat me within an inch of my life and I was hospitalized and you know the the trauma that came after that and then it, how it turned me into this sadistic psychopath that wanted to hurt people you know that's not there anymore I can talk about it it's part of my past it's part of who I was but it's most certainly not who I am now I look in the mirror every morning and I remind myself I'm a loving father I'm a stand-up person in my community and I genuinely care about the well-being of other people but I'll tell you what man those initial reactions because I deal with it not just online I deal with it at work I'm the safety guy I'm the guy they call in to, to, to resolve conflicts and people say some really stupid shit to me and my first reaction is motherfucker <laughs> you know <laughs> like I will <laughs> you know what I mean and I, I gotta <laughs> laugh it off it's like ah oh, you you joker you <laughs> and the guys have no idea and, and actually, I've become friends with a lot of them because of my levity and because of the way I make light of everything. And they're like, no, that Charlie, he's really cool, man. He doesn't, you know, he's really easy to work with. He's super easy going. Well, we love having him around. They have, they have no idea how sadistic and twisted I really am. One, one time this one guy insulted me, and it was pretty bad. And my, I thought, I literally contemplated, like, lighting him on fire, like, dumping this chemical that we had as bad on him. And then right was he, was he about to expire, like pissing on him to put him out, you know, <laughs> just like thoughts of that or just, just man, you know, and, and the fact of the matter is, is like, you know, I, I know that guy's, he's not there anymore, but it's just, just I'll still have those thoughts and they, they come and go really fast now. Like I get, I'll, I'll get a thought like that. Like my initial knee jerk reaction is to just do something really, really exceptionally hyper, like like disproportionately violent to somebody for something that is just a minor slight and then i'll laugh it off i'm like it just comes and goes now it's just like whoa <laughs> like where did that where where did that come from like come on man you know what i mean like it's not that serious and it isn't that serious and i know it's not that serious and i can honestly say i'm not that guy anymore i really am not i am a softy i love my kids I'm like violence is the last resort like I just, I'm just, I would always, 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 always seek a peaceful resolution. You know, I ne never, ever want to hurt anybody ever again. But I'm capable of it, absolutely, 100 percent. And I think that's what Jordan Peterson was saying when he said, "You, you know, you have to be a monster to be virtuous. You have to be capable of being violent in order to make being peaceful a virtue. If you're not capable of being a monster." You know, you can't say that being nonviolent is a virtue because you have no other choice but to be nonviolent. And I think that's where these men are sick and twisted and resentful and whiny because they, they, they have no power. And the only power they can exercise is to make everybody's lives miserable online. You know, that's what they do is like, they, you know, they've never, they've never had any real conflict. They haven't had to stare the devil in his eyes. They haven't had anything really bad happen to them. They haven't been in any life and death situations. They haven't been tested. They haven't walked through the other side of it and left death in the face. And now they're just, you know, trying to prove themselves. And that's why they act the way they do. 
Because men that have been through, men that have looked death in the eye, men that have like seriously been through some serious hardships, don't act like that. There's no, we don't need to prove ourselves. You know, we know what we're capable of. I just, you know, it, it, I think what, it, what happens is because there's that insulation of the keyboard, you, you just wish you could just reach through the monitor and choke someone and tell them to shut the fuck up. But you just, you, you just know he's never going to stop. He's never going to stop. And you just, there's no way you can do, you can't do anything about it. So there's a powerlessness there. And that's where the, this anger just comes from, that, that, that feeling of hopelessness where nothing you can do is ever going to shut this person up. And if you just could confront him for one second, he would never, ever talk to you like that again. And that's, that's the little voice you deal with. So you got to go, all right, since I don't have control over the other people and there's nothing I can do about it, all I have control over is my choices. So I have to choose to just be cool with it. You know what I mean? And I have to make it a joke. I got to laugh it off. I got to hit the heavy bag. I got to use the weights. I got to talk to my therapist. I got to just like let it go. You know what I mean? It needs to not be a big deal because it's not. And at the end of the day, they get to live with the fact that they will, you know, always have that question in the back of their mind and they'll never have true respect. And we, we real men, you know, we don't need that. We're not looking for that exoneration from the public. You know, we're like we're we're truly showcasing our abilities, and it has nothing to do with like needing to be respected by people. It would be nice though. It'd be nice if we all kind of just treated each other like decent human beings. That would be cool. I don't see that ever happening though. You know, for years I, I sought like clinical solutions to these problems, like seeking therapists and doctors and working with professionals and people that have, were survivors of abuse. But lately, I think that's the reason why I've been getting into the Bible, because I've noticed that there's a biblical cure for almost all of this, too. And if you're living right, if you're living by God's will, and you, you really, truly accepted Jesus as your Savior. And, and I'm, I'll be honest, I'm still wrestling with it. You know what I mean? I'm wrestling with God. But I'm finding that all, all those years of trying to find Western medicine solutions to my issues... Uh, there's a prescription in that book, and the more I dig into the book, the more it's helping me become a fully realized man, because I, I'm, it's bringing me out of myself and making me of service to others, and I think there's a lot to that. Dude. You integrate that shadow, because when are we are, are most useful? Well, when I'm at work and I am that guy that does conflict resolution professionally, I feel like I'm being of true service to other people, like I'm genuinely useful in that situation. And that takes me out of myself and all my garbage. And it's only when people come at me sideways that I have to deal with that, you know. And it comes and goes, just like everything else. And some days I'm good and some days I'm not. But for the most part, I would say I'm better adjusted. I'm more well adjusted than I'm not maladjusted. Does that make sense? I'm more gooder than I am badder. Well, I'm a little badder, but mostly gooder. And like anything else, we're all a work in progress. I wake up with a simple goal. Try to be a little bit better today than I was yesterday. And that's with anything. It's with weightlifting. It's with work. It's with my family. It's with my kids. I'm a shitty dad sometimes. I try to be a better one. I'm a dumbass husband. I try to be a better one. I'm an idiot at work. I try to be a better boss. You know? It's with anything. It's like if we just try to incrementally in increase or improve over time. All that bad stuff, while it never really goes away, you do integrate it. And I think the big takeaway from this is make sure you confront your past. You know, those demons that haunt you and make you act like the way you do online, where you're seeking validation and from other men in the most toxic and childish of ways. I think if you really face those questions as to why you act that way and you learn to integrate that a little bit more... It's going to improve the quality of your life, and you're going to be a better man for it. And that's really all I've done. It's just try to ask those questions. Why do you do the things you do? Why do you act the way you act? And I'm being as real with you guys as I've ever been. I'm letting you in on like a layer of me that I keep way, 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 way down. You know what I mean? That guy is in a cage with a breaker bar that says, Break only in time of war. Do not release. Don't let that guy out. He's not needed for day-to-day -day activities. You know what I mean? Just keep him 
throw him some meat and just leave him alone. <laughs> Someday he might be needed, but that is not, <laughs> at a PTA meeting is not when we, we need that guy. You know what I mean? We don't need him in traffic when someone cuts us off. When somebody makes fun of their hair or, you know, like at work when they just, you don't need that guy. You know what I mean? You need the happy, the, it's a joke. Everything's funny. That's the guy we want, but they're both the same guy. I'll see you on the battlefield.